Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are the richest people in the world at the moment. But if you put all their money together, this amount won't be anywhere near the wealth of the richest person in history. Meet Mansa Musa, the richest man who ever lived. He has held first place in the top riches for more than 700 years, and it's unlikely that somebody will be able to reach his wealth level in the near future. Jeff Bezos has about $203 billion. Elon Musk owns more than $300 billion. Mansa Musa, translated into today's money, had an incalculable wealth. The most conservative estimates suggest that he had more than $400 to $500 billion. However, this is only a hypothesis. Most historians believe he was unimaginably rich and powerful, and this wealth destroyed his country's economy. But let's start from the beginning. Mansa Musa was born in 1280 in West Africa, in the country of Mali, the present-day Republic of Mali. His whole family consisted of rulers, so he spent his childhood and youth in luxury. Almost all this time, his elder brother ruled the country. And then, when Mansa Musa turned 32, his brother abdicated. He wanted to explore the world and was obsessed with the Atlantic Ocean and the lands that lay beyond it. He assembled a huge expedition of 2,000 ships and tens of thousands of people. They sailed like a whole city on the water and never came back. Some historians believe that Mansa Musa's brother managed to reach South America, but there is no true evidence of this. So, young Mansa Musa became the ruler of Mali and the owner of all the family wealth in 1312. He was a good ruler and a smart strategist. In the first years of his reign, he managed to annex about 24 cities. He united disparate small states into one empire. He greatly expanded the kingdom of Mali. It extended about 2,000 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. He owned almost the entire western part of the continent. From that moment on, the wealth of Mansa Musa began to grow enormously. In the medieval world, gold was considered the most valuable source of wealth on the entire planet. Many historians believe that Mansa Musa owned almost half of all available reserves of gold in the world at that time. They arranged thousands of trading centers for gold and other valuable goods like salt in Mali. And part of all this large-scale trade profit went directly into the pocket of Mansa Musa. He had everything, money, power, and servants. But there was something he desperately lacked. His desire was similar to his brother's. Mansa Musa also wanted to travel, not to discover the world, but to glorify his empire. He wanted fame. Only a few people heard of his powerful kingdom abroad, but he knew that his country was almost the richest in the whole world. To achieve what he wanted, Mansa Musa went on a pilgrimage to Mecca through the Sahara Desert and Egypt. This trip was one of the greatest anyone had ever undertaken. Mansa Musa set on his journey with a caravan consisting of about 60,000 people. He was accompanied by the entire royal court, all the officials, thousands of soldiers, artists, camel drivers, merchants, and tens of thousands of servants. They took a long flock of goats and sheep for food. It was a huge city wandering through the desert. Just imagine the amount of water and food needed to feed this crowd. As soon as the king announced a halt, long tent camps were set up. It would take you a whole day to walk around this territory. Thousands of people worked on cooking food. Artists were playing on stage. Merchants were offering their goods to people inside the camp or to travelers passing by. Servants took care of the animals and helped with household issues. All this was happening under the scorching sun on the hot sand. And then they had to fold the tent city back to get on the road again. Most likely, not everyone managed to survive such a journey. But the good news was that Mansa Musa treated his people very well. Almost all of these people were dressed in the best Persian silk and fabrics woven from gold threads. Hundreds of camels were pulling loads with hundreds of thousands of pounds of pure gold. There was so much gold that you could see it shining in the sun from afar. No one was ever hungry or thirsty. There were enough supplies for a comfortable trip. The travelers passing by were amazed by the scale and beauty of the huge royal expedition. Rumors of the approaching king of Mali reached Cairo before the king himself. Finally, Mansa Musa's caravan arrived in Cairo. The locals were shocked by all that luxury and wealth. But the coolest thing was that the ruler generously shared it with people. 
the gold he gave them made many poor people rich. He stayed in Cairo for three months. Gold was everywhere, and that's why it lost its value. It made no sense to sell goods for gold when everyone had it. That's how Mansa Musa lowered the price of gold and destroyed the country's economy during his stay in Cairo. According to estimates of modern economists and historians, the crisis he caused led to losses of about $1.5 billion in the Middle East. When he realized what he had done, he tried to help the economy. One theory says that he wasn't able to do it because he had spent all the money. According to another story, he wanted to take some of the gold back from circulation. To do this, he attempted to borrow gold at huge interest rates from Egyptian lenders. He failed to restore the economy, but reached his desirable goal. News and rumors about his wealth and generosity spread all over the world. An image of an African king sitting on a golden throne with a piece of gold in his hand appeared on the map of the Catalan Atlas of 1375. With this drawing, they designated Timbuktu, the major city of Mali, and the king sitting there was Mansa Musa. Here's some real stories mixed with legends about the city and its ruler. Some said it was impossible to count the amount of wealth that Mansa Musa owned. Others believed that he had enough gold to make every person on the planet rich. People from all over the world began to travel to Mali to see this place with their own eyes. Timbuktu had become an African El Dorado thanks to the mystery and legends. Many thought it was a golden city at the end of the world. European treasure hunters and explorers went on long, dangerous journeys to visit the kingdom. But all this happened many years after the reign of Mansa Musa. He not only glorified his country and his name all over the world, but also returned to his homeland with new scientists, poets, and architects. He paid them hundreds of pounds of gold to convince them to move to Timbuktu. The amount he gave to each of them would be around $8 million in today's money. He started investing in education, arts, literature, architecture, and libraries. He built schools and colleges. During the reign of Mansa Musa, Timbuktu became a center of education. People from all over the world came here to get high-quality knowledge. In 1337, Mansa Musa passed away at the age of 56. His sons inherited all his wealth, but they failed to keep their father's legacy. Many disputes, attempts to get more money, uprisings, and intrigues all led to the collapse of the powerful kingdom. Small states divided. For hundreds of years, Mali had been losing its power. Then, Europeans came to this territory, and it finally destroyed the empire. That's why so little is known about the royal dynasty of Mansa Musa today. The history of the Middle Ages is mainly viewed from the West. And in the West, just a few people heard of Mali during the reign of Mansa Musa. If Europeans had visited the kingdom more in its prime, at the peak of military and economic power, Mansa Musa would have become much more famous, and the kingdom's glory would have stretched for many centuries. But the Europeans were about 200 years too late. They found the country during a severe crisis and uprisings. It's still impossible to calculate how rich he was. Perhaps nobody else will ever be able to reach this level. If the Mansa Musa dynasty lived up to today and kept the empire, we'd probably live in a completely different world. Africa could be the richest and most developed continent in the world, and Mali would be its center. The kingdom would achieve all this peacefully. Mansa Musa was generous and preferred to conquer countries with luxury, not force. <laughs>